I don't know how much you guys know about St. Ignatius of Loyola. My name is John Ignatius, so I need to love him, right? Well, St. Ignatius was a Spanish soldier born in the 16th century, and he was very brave, very valiant. He, he had a lot of courage, but also he was very vain. He wanted fame, he wanted honor, he wanted to be important. And he was leading the, the Spanish army against the French in one of the million battles that they, they fought for the Navarre province in Spain. And as Saint Ignatius was leading the Spaniards, they were doing great. But in one moment of the, of the battle, he was hit by a cannonball. And he was taken home. The Spaniards obviously eventually lost the battle. But Ignatius went home and had, let us call it surgery, if you want, in the 16th century. It was a butchery, actually. But imagine what it meant to fix that knee. Anyway, they fixed it, kind of. And as he was in bed convalescent, he asked for books to read because he was bored. There was no internet, no Netflix, no nothing. And he said, I need to read something. So there were only, in that house only two books, The Life of Christ and The Lives of the Saints. So St. Ignatius started by reading The Life of Christ. And he realized by reading that the love of God for the world. He was Catholic. He was Christian Catholic, but he had never experienced the love that Jesus had for him. And by reading that book, he said, I see how much God loves me. So by reading the lives of the saints, he realized the response of the best men and women in the world to that love. And a transformation began to happen in his heart. So he read about St. Benedict, for example. Benedict was a noble Roman that was born in the end of the fifth century when the Roman Empire was collapsing. And he was sent to Rome to study, but he saw the decadence of the empire. And he said, you know, I don't want this. So he, he left Rome and went to a cave and allowed himself to be transformed by Christ and realized what is really important in, the, in life. And then he left. Once he was transformed, he gathered other people and he founded this order called the Benedictines. And the Benedictines, in, his, in their monasteries, they kept all the ancient manuscripts of culture. Now, the barbarians were invading Rome, destroying everything, burning down all towns. So the Benedictines say, we need to save these manuscripts. So they hid everything in the monasteries. And then they started teaching the barbarians about civilized life, to stay in one place, to work the land, to await for the harvest. And when they realized that they were civilized, then, only then, they brought them the manuscripts of the ancient poets and philosophers and Europe was reborn to culture. They saved the culture that we have today. One man, one man transformed by Christ, who gathered other people, saved our current culture. And Ignatius, who was a great man, said, he didn't say, oh, shoot, I will never be like him. I'm so bad. I'm such a sinner. I will never be able to imitate him. No, he said exactly the opposite. If Benedict did this, I want to do the same. And then he, saw, he read about St. Francis of Assisi, a different case. St. Francis was the son of a merchant in Italy, very prosperous with a lot of money. And again, he was just enchanted with all this money and materialistic culture. And he heard this voice, Francis, help me rebuild my church. And he saw this little chapel there, and he went and rebuilt it. You can still see it in Assisi if you go there. But then he realized that the voice was telling him to rebuild the church, to change the church. So he embraced poverty. And then he gathered other brothers and then sisters. And he founded the Franciscan friars and then the nuns, this, the poor clerks, and then a third order. And in a time in which Europe was immersed in materialism and people were thinking about honor and money and fame, he was able to just blow this purifying gust into the courts of Europe. And Europe was purified once again because one man was transformed by Christ, gathered other people, and they together transformed the entire continent and the world. So Ignatius said, well, if Francis did this, I want to do the same. And he did. When he was 
recovered, he left his house, went to a cave in Spain, spent some time there just meditating, being transformed by Christ. And then he went out, gathered companions, and founded the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits, that preserved the faith in Europe and brought the faith to the new world. So guys, I think that at this moment, all of us are thinking the same question. If Benedict did it, why not me? If Francis did this, why not me? If Ignatius did it, why not me? And I would add, if Carlo Acutis did it, why not me? If Michel Dupont did it, why not me? It is possible. So the good news, brothers and sisters, is that holiness is real, but also it is possible. And it is happening right here, right now. Thank you.